The sufferings of the present aren't worth comparing with the glory to be revealed. Hi, I'm Father Cedric Bazania, the host of Live With Passion. Thank you so much for tuning in to the program. I want to share with you from Luke chapter 24. This is the risen Jesus speaking, and he said, O foolish people, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Beginning with Moses, all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I'm going to talk about a word that may cause fear in your heart, suffering. I know that many of the people that watch my programs are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and some of you are in your 90s. I was hoping originally to reach out to those who are young, and I still do, and I produce some episodes for young people. And some young people watch my programs, but the majority of my people that I hear from are elderly and older, and I understand that. And it seems to me that everybody's going through something, usually a physical suffering, a relationship problem, emotional, mental distress. Maybe you can't sleep. Different people are going through different things. I have a Facebook page, and I got some prayer requests and Facebook requests. My best friend committed suicide. I lost my wife of 55 years. I have macular degeneration and I'm losing my eyesight. My daughter is dating another woman. Suffering, pain, distress, trials, tribulations take many forms and everybody has to deal with it in some way, shape or form. And that's what I wanna talk about in this episode, making sense out of suffering. The apostles had to suffer. Most of them were martyred. Jesus certainly suffered. By the way, I'm a passionist priest. Passionist is the religious community that I have professed my vows in. The word passion, this sign means the passion of Jesus Christ. The word passion means suffering. And I have a dedication to the passion, to remember the passion and proclaim Jesus' passion to all people the meaning of the passion, that it brings eternal life and forgiveness, but also the sufferings of Jesus and our sufferings. We are the body of Christ. We're going through all kinds of pain, all kinds of trials and tribulation, all kinds of suffering. What's the meaning of this? Right now in the United States, in the western part of the United States, going through the worst drought in 1,200 years. There's fires, there's inflation, pain at the pump, struggles with Russia, the pandemic, worn out nurses and doctors in the ICU, closer to home. Do you ever try to get an appointment with a doctor? <laughs> it can take two to three months. Everybody's hurting. I live with an 85-year-old priest who's dealing with Parkinson's. His hands is shaking a lot and has memory loss, has to walk with a cane now, and he's a missionary. Never had to go through these things. People are struggling. If you go to the medical dictionary and you go through A through Z, the maladies and the sicknesses that you can get are astronomical. There's thousands of them. And it's like, whoa, I don't even want to look in there just in case. Everybody's got something going on. Suffering is part and parcel of being human. Is God punishing us? Of course, you know what I'm going to say. No, he's not punishing us. We live in a fallen humanity. Because of our sin, we fell from God. And in a way, we disconnected ourselves from God, from that healing flow. To be close to God is to experience healing. God is our healer. And we cut ourselves off. Therefore, we've got to go through these things. We're a fallen race. It's a result of free will. Don't blame God. It's a result of evil, the evil one, and evil in the world. Nobody's exempt from it. When I go through something, instead of asking why me, I say, why not me? And I thank God for the things that I don't have. I shouldn't have to be exempt from suffering any more than anybody else. I don't want to say that, but the bottom line is, is we all suffer. When Jesus talked about his own suffering, 
he said something extremely interesting, and I just read it to you. He said, wasn't it necessary that the Son of Man had to go through this suffering before entering his glory? Wow. He was basically saying that suffering is something that all of us, as we go through it, is necessary. Meaning, it has to happen before something better happens. You're not the only one going through something. We are all suffering in some way, shape, or form. Paul the Apostle said the same thing, and he was shipwrecked. He had been stoned, beaten, imprisoned, finally martyred. He said, through many trials and tribulations, we must go through them in order to enter the kingdom of God. He's saying the same thing Jesus said. These things are necessary in order to get to our home. It's kind of like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz when she had to go through all the tribulations and get the witch's broom and present that to the Wizard of Oz. She had to go through before she could go home. And we got to go through too. And it's hard. But again, you're not alone. Everybody's going through it and there is meaning. In order to make bread, for example, it has all kinds of ingredients, flour and sugar and salt and oil. But a necessary ingredient in bread is yeast. Without yeast, the bread won't rise. Sufferings are like the yeast of life. Without them, we won't rise. Biblically, let's look at the Bible. Suffering all over the place in the Bible. But it offers us hope and meaning. We talked about that in the beginning of this episode. Paul the Apostle makes an audacious statement one of my favorite scriptures in the whole of the Bible. And he said, the sufferings of the present, the sufferings of the present aren't worth comparing with the glory to be revealed. First of all, the sufferings of the present are temporary. The glory to be revealed is eternal. So they're not worth comparing. And then the sufferings of the present, no matter how awful they are and whatever you have to go through, you can't even compare it. Imagine what the glory is going to be like. That as terrible as sufferings that some people are going through, you can't even compare it. That's what Paul is saying. This is one of the most hopeful statements in the whole of the Bible. It's an audacious statement. And there are many atrocities going on in life. But Paul is saying that there's something way better coming. Cling to hope. Dare to hope. You put it on a scale, the sufferings of the present oh, aren't worth comparing with the glory to be revealed. The glory far outweighs it. Job, of course, lost his family, lost his possessions, lost his health. He was restored. And in the midst of it all, he dared to hope. His wife told him to curse God and die. But Job responded in a hope-filled way. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. And that is so good. When you're going through tribulations and trials and hardships, I think that's one of the best things that you can say. Yeah, I may be going through some things and it's awful and it hurts and I don't understand everything, but I know my Redeemer lives. In other words, God has the last say in this. God will raise me up. God will bring me through this. God will strengthen me. If God is for us, who can be against? Have hope. Dare to hope. Paul said the same thing. He said, we were unbearably crushed, Paul the Apostle. Unbearably crushed. We thought we were going to die. That was only to make us trust God who raises the dead. And that's the thing with suffering. You have a choice, not whether or not you're going to suffer, but you have a choice how you handle your suffering. A lot of people 
use their suffering as an excuse to say there is no God or God doesn't love me, and they decide to fall away. But other people, when they go through pain and trials and suffering, like Paul the Apostle, learn to trust God because they know that God is for them and not against, and that in Christ we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I love what Paul said this very audacious statement. He said, I believe we know that not even death <laughs> will separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Jesus. And he lists the whole litany of sufferings. But not even death will separate us. I want that on my tombstone. Not even death will separate us from the love of God. He holds our tears in his bottle. He knows what we're going through. He sees the pain, but he's going to bring us through. Suffering forces us to make a better choice, a basic choice, a choice either to doubt God or trust God. One of my favorite prayers, Jesus, I trust in you. I don't understand, but I trust in you. You can either doubt God as you're going through things, or you can rely, lean on, depend upon, trust God. That's one of the great meanings of suffering. It forces us to make a choice. A lot of people choose, like in the Gospel of John, they no longer stayed with Jesus and they left him. Or they stayed with him and they said, you have the words of eternal life. Where else are we going to go? And it forces us to make a choice. And it's true. Where else can we go? There's nowhere else that we can go. God alone can save us and help us. Truth is that God hears the cry of the poor and he will help us. And one of the most comforting verses in the whole of the scriptures comes from the book of Revelation that God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. One day, no matter what tears you are weeping and crying, no matter what pain you are going through, whatever tribulation you are dealing with, God's going to wipe those tears away one day. The sufferings of the present aren't worth comparing with the glory that's going to be revealed. One book that I rely upon is a book that was written by Viktor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist, and it was called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl gives an account of his being held in Auschwitz, a Nazi concentration camp. He saw the worst and the best of people. The worst of people because a lot of people gave up hope, and that's what happens when they suffer. A lot of people give up hope and they don't want to live anymore. They get very negative, they get into self-pity, and they want to stop living. But he also saw the best of people, people that shared their bread, people that had a good attitude. I think about Maximilian Kolbe, Franciscan priest that was held in a Nazi concentration camp, who gave his life in place of another so that the other could live. This altruistic act, Viktor Frankl, talked about meaning. He talked about hope. He said, people that lost hope got negative and gave up, but people that had hope stayed positive and stayed strong. The hope that Viktor Frankl had was of being reunited with his wife and being able to reestablish his practice. So he clung to that. And I want you to cling to hope. That's the meaning of your suffering. Yeah, it's hard. Everybody knows it's bitter. It hurts. There's no comfort in it, but there's hope. Redeemer lives. Along with hope, there's meaning. He coined this phrase, he said, 
Viktor Frankl did, if you have a why, you can put up with any what. If you have a why, you can put up with any what. In other words, if there's meaning to this, then you can deal with it. Well, what is the meaning of suffering? How about virtue? Compassion, that word compassion, with suffering, suffering with others, brings humility, suffering does. Endurance brings patience, courage, can only be learned in the crucible of suffering. What I've been through has helped forge my life. I am growing. I heard this Russian proverb, the same hammer that shatters glass forges steel. The same hammer that shatters glass forges steel. The same sufferings that breaks a person down can make a person. It's all up to you. Meaning, purpose, virtue. I remember my Aunt Val. My Aunt Val lived to be 90 years old and I visited her one time in Massachusetts where I grew up. And as I was visiting her, she said, Father Cedric, I'm the last one left out of the 10 siblings. Your father has passed away and all my other siblings has passed. I'm 90 years old, hardly ever leave the house. God must have something for me to do. And I looked at her, and that's what a lot of people think, especially when you're older, God must have something for me to do. And I was thinking, well, I'm not sure exactly you can't really leave the house. I don't think God has a whole lot for you to do out there. What I told her was, Aunt Val, it's not so much what God wants you to do as what God wants to do in you. Forging your character, developing virtue, patience, kindness, praying for other people, molding your heart. God is at work in you. God is the potter. We are the clay. The other thing about suffering that I want you to get is that suffering actually brings us to God. Like Paul the Apostle said, I rely upon God in my trials. And we can go through conversions and greater depth because of our suffering. I like to put it this way. It takes us from the superficial to the supernatural. It brings us deeper. And then also, suffering has to do with attitude. Frankel wrote, when everything is stripped away, what remains is your ability to choose your attitude in any given set of circumstances. It's not your circumstances that determine your attitude. You determine your attitude. And yes, it's hard to be positive when you're going through things. It's hard to stay optimistic when you're hurting. But you can do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And that's exactly what God wants. He wants virtue. He wants hope. He wants trust. And he wants us to be positive, even though, <laughs> I was going to entitle this talk, even though, even though we're going through these things. And yeah, people are going through divorces. People are going through grieving, going through physical pain, going through facing their own death. I know what's out there. I've heard your stories. It's hard, but there is meaning. You have a choice. Not whether or not you're going to suffer, but how you handle your suffering. As I said, one of my favorite prayers has to do with trust, and it's, Jesus, I trust in you. I don't understand all this, but I trust in you. And that gets you so close. There's a mystical communion with his sufferings, because Jesus, nobody suffered more than Jesus did. When I walked the Stations of the Cross, and I see how he fell and got up and fell and got up and fell and got up and did everything he could. And then for three to six hours, the extreme pain that he suffered at the cross, nobody went through any more suffering or pain than Jesus did. It was
was awful, and then you can unite your pain to his and know him in a deep mystical way. That's another meaning of your suffering. There's so much meaning in it. I break it open in my book called Live Passionately. I want you to get that book and try to understand because understanding is key. If you can have some insight into the meaning of it all, then somehow you can bear. You can bear the pain that you're going through. In addition, suffering can be a catalyst for change. Think about, for example, the story of the prodigal son. He was having a great time. He was the life of the party. He was spending the inheritance and having a lot of parties and a lot of fun and everything. And then the money ran out. Then he had to slop with the pigs in the mud. And then, only then, did he come to his senses. And he said, even the slaves working for my father have more than I have. I'm going to go back to my father. That's what it does. It awakens us. Those who are in the 12-step program, many people will talk about how they have bottomed out. I like to say God is the God of the bottoming out. <laughs> A lot of people find God through their lowest moment. I know when I was suffering as a young man at age 20, just went through a breakup with a woman that I was lonely and hurting and didn't have God in my life. And at that bottoming out moment, God hears the cry of the poor. That's right from the Bible. He heard my cry, changed my life. Sufferings can bring us to a deeper relationship with God and sufferings can bring us to personal change. You're usually not going to want to change when everything's going well. Classic example, the eaglet in the nest. It will stay there forever if it can. Why not? It's comfortable. Doesn't have to work. Mom is bringing it fish. Everything's going great. Then when it starts to grow, something happens. The mother bird knows, the mother eagle knows that it's time for Junior to get out of the nest. So what she does is she starts pulling out the padding in the nest and underneath are thorns. And then the eaglet isn't so comfortable anymore and it starts to hurt and that's when it starts to fly. Sometimes it's the discomforts in our life, the sufferings, the trials that actually make us fly. Eagles go higher when the storm comes. Sometimes it's the storms in our life that make us rise and go higher, and seek God, and become all that we can be. Change is very important, and suffering oftentimes brings change. I think about the saints in the church. The word saint means a holy one. That's what God's trying to do. That's the meaning of our pain. It's part and parcel of being human, but he's trying to make us holy. God is the potter, remember? We are the clay. Anyway, saints, St. Saint Francis of Assisi, the universal saint, even non-Catholics love him. He had to go through this experience of being in a dungeon for a whole year. They were at a war with a city-state of Persia, Assisi was. He got captured, put into a dungeon for a year. He came out of that dungeon totally different. He used to be the life of the party too. They called him the dancer and he changed became a very holy person, proclaimed the gospel everywhere. Think about St. Ignatius of Loyola, wanted to be a military leader out in the battlefield. French cannonball almost blows his leg off. He's in the hospital recuperating, reading a book of the saints, and he has a change. Became a Catholic priest, founded the Jesuits, became a saint. Sufferings are something that everybody's going through. Trials, tribulations, relationship problems, emotions, physical problems, mental problems. We all have different stuff. But God is using them. He's not giving it to us. He's using it to transform us. We have hope. There is meaning brings us closer to God, creates trust, brings about personal change, and it brings about a mystical union with Jesus Christ. You can know him in a way that you never knew him before as you journey with him the road to the passion. I know you're going through some things. I know that you're going through some trials and some sufferings. I hear your prayers. 
your requests. I see what you write me at Facebook. And I want to say that it's not arbitrary. God is at work in you. He didn't give it to you, but he's going to use it to raise you up. And I love that statement of Paul, this audacious statement, and I hope you will cling to hope, dare to hope, be a hope-filled, positive person. That's part of the reason why you're going through these things. Paul makes that audacious statement that the sufferings of the present aren't worth comparing with the glory to be revealed. Dare to hope and don't just live, live with passion. Your sufferings have meaning. Got a letter from a woman. She said, I was going down a dark road in my world and I've been turned around. I'm going in a completely different direction. I will live my whole life thankful to God and to you, Father Cedric, for your talks. Did you notice what was happening? She was going through a dark road and got turned around. That's the meaning, it's one of the meanings of suffering. And there are lots of meaning of suffering. That's why I wrote that book called Live Passionately to help you to understand. You can deal with any what if you have a why. If you have meaning, you can deal with your suffering. This book will help you to understand the meaning of your suffering, which is transformation and so many other things. Live passionately. I hope you will get it. All you have to do is go to my website, fathercedric.org, very safe and secure, or call 844-FATHER-C, or write me in Houston, Texas. All the money that you give to purchase these books and your donations, thank you, will go toward the filming and the production and the airing of Live With Passion all around the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you in advance for your donations and your purchases. Don't just live, live with passion. God has blessed you abundantly. God has lavished grace upon you so that you can become all God created you to be. Right now, simply call, write, or go online and order Series 890 DVD or CD, as well as the book Father talked about. Because of these programs, people everywhere are discovering God in fresh new ways. Every purchase supports Father Cedric in his God-given mission to touch lives and save souls. Father Cedric is a Catholic priest with the professed vow of poverty. Be assured that the money from your purchases will be used to produce an heir, live with passion. To purchase these dynamic resources, simply call 844-FATHER-C. That's 844-328-4372. A kind operator is waiting for your call. Write him at 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024, or log on to frcetric.org and order online. Simple, easy, and secure. May blessings overflow in your life.